Dobre veche, Moscow! Hello! It is William C. Nonporig and Lucy calling from Wee Wee Vlogs. It is time to review Russia's Eurovision 2021 song, Russian Woman from Manisha. Oh my goodness, guys. It's all about the Russian ladies. The question is, are you ready for the Russian woman? Shall we talk about it? <laughs> Let's do this! Yes, the Russian woman is Manisha. She, of course, was born in Tajikistan, moved to Russia, now has a flourishing career. She has been through a lot, but our girl has her dignity intact and her talent is on full display. This song is a call to Russian women to get up and slay. As I can see on WeebyBlogs.com, a newer generation of Russian women have had to deal with new problems and Manisha discusses them quite extensively. This is about overcoming the perils of a male-centric society and the difficulties that women face on a daily basis as they struggle to slay. But in the end, they stand up, they sing, and they slay Manisha style, yes! <laughs> Woo! Now, she is singing in semi-final one. She performs third. Lithuania opens the show. Then we have Slovenia's Anna Sochlich. Then we have Russia, Manisha. And then we have Sweden, Tusa. Let's actually start with a British woman to discuss Russian woman. It is Lucy in the UK. So I think this song is just magnificent. Like the way just she embodies everything she's singing about, the way she performs it. And I don't speak a word of Russia past Spatsibun. Uh, I even said that wrong. Can I Girl, are you speaking German? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I heard seven. I definitely I don't speak Russian. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't speak a word of Russian past Spatsibun. And like, I understand what this song is about from the way that she's singing. You can sense the sarcasm, kind of, and like the I that this song has irony to it. You can tell that it's not like, I mean, obviously it's about serious subject matter, but she's not being deadly serious. She's kind of like she's doing like an intelligent take on kind of everything that's going on. And I think it's just such a smart move to bring something like that to Eurovision because obviously Russia and Eurovision has had kind of issues in the past where people have been quite rude to them in the audience etc but how can you not love this like it's talking about the elephant in the room in like the most brilliant way it's somebody who's actually affected by those problems bringing them to the audience with style and also like it just it's a bit of a bop like when she like kind of breaks it down and she's just kind of like mm, mm, round and just oh I live for it I just adore her she is incredible and like we're getting more than one feminist anthem in Eurovision this year. I'm, I'm, I'm living for it, here for it. Irish man, what do you think of Russian woman? I have to say that the very first time I heard this, I was kind of like, what, what is this? Because Russian woman isn't the style of music that I would normally play. Like, I don't, I don't know how you would define this genre, but it's not something that I type into Spotify and play on a regular basis. But then the more I got into the song and the story and the meaning behind the lyrics, it's really, really grown on me because this is a proper feminist anthem because so often at Eurovision, you have a song and it's be like, girl power, we'll flip our hair, we'll put on our heels and we'll strut. And that's because we're feminists and we know what we're going to do. And it's kind of like all this sashaying and chanting and everything. And at the end of the day, there's not a real message there. It's very hollow. Whereas everything in Manisha's song is so taught true and she has references to Russian culture, to Russian history. There's about the women in the fields, then there's other references to women waiting for men coming home from war. And then there's that it it spans the whole history of Russia, like from pre industrial revolution right up to now. So it's a very intelligent song. And even I saw people saying that there was the symbolism of the outfits that she's wearing that there's a meaning behind that, that it's, every little detail has been thought through. And one thing as well is that 
people have been criticizing it for being un-Russian. And it is un-Russian at Eurovision in that it's very out there and it's a risky song because Russia always goes for something that is very polished, very highly produced, kind of manufactured pop is Russia's trade at Eurovision for the last 10, 15 years. And even when they go away from that, it's something like the Babushki, which is still very, like, safe. There's nothing revolutionary about what the grannies are singing. They're not doing any messages that are potentially going to upset people. But Manisha is just, yeah, so different, so out there. And she's so unapologetic about everything that she's posting pro-LGBT content, pro-refugee, pro-woman. And she's stood up to these people. And she's also doing a good job at getting that message out there because it's several weeks ahead and she's already been featured on BBC's morning breakfast show, which is the most watched breakfast show in the UK. So she has the PR machine going and she has the story and she has the attitude. and Yeah, she has a, a, a whole package. Oh, I almost share all the feelings with um, Porek. I also was shocked when I first watched the live performance and uh, heard the song. I wasn't expect maybe because I wasn't expecting something like this from her. Uh, I remember in 2018 when she had an interview with William, with you, she uh, talked about a song. I think it was a ballad. Or something like that. It, it was completely different and the title was completely different. What will you sing? Actually, I have one song. Um, I didn't release it and I'm still dreaming that I will sing it on Eurovision and it calls I am who I am because I want to sing about you know your personality, yeah. your realness. Your realness! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really do. I really want to do this. I was expecting something like this. But Russia this year was so, I mean, the national final, I think it was so last minute and I was so, what? I mean, <laughs> wow. But I do love Manisha. I think she's very um, theatrical and I love this. She's an artist. I love the fashion. She uh, dresses very good. Mm, um, that jumper, you know, red jumper, I don't think I like this that much, but... I think she's, um, you know, very stylish. And maybe I would love, I would have liked the song more when she, you know, when she sung a little bit more because the song right now, it's a little bit as if she's talking. You know what I mean? And it's not really, only I think chorus, it's only the singing part. But normal, she's, you know, acting and talking. Um, but she's a performer. You can You can tell this. And... Yeah, I like it. Shout out to Valentina Tereshkova, the first Russian woman in space. Shout out to Maria Sharapova, Grand Slam tennis champion. Shout out to Svetlana Horkina, gymnast extraordinaire. Girl, let's go back to Olga Corbett, okay? Let's get some Nelly Kim. There are so many great Russian women in the history of the world. And now we can add another Manisha. Say it with me now. Manisha. She is Man. queen. <laughs> the lyrics are really direct. You're already past 30. Hello, where are the children? You're a nice looking, you're nice looking overall, but you should lose some weight. No, no, no. Manisha is not here for this. In an interview in Russia, which I'm reading on weeweeblogs.com, she says, the song is about the transformation of the identity of women in the last few centuries in Russia. She walked the unbelievable road from the traditional countryside dwelling to the factory halls, to voyages into space. She was never afraid to stand against stereotypes and to take the responsibility herself. When you know that, the song becomes everything. She embodies it. At the beginning, she looks very folksy. You know, she's in the countryside. I think she has birds in her hair. I made the comparison previously to the woman with the pigeons in Home Alone 2. There's something very like, you're like, something, something's different here. Um, but then she rips it off and she's in the mechanic wear. It's almost like something you would see in a factory, like she's fixing a car, but it's also a very modern jumpsuit. Like you could see someone in New York or London walking, popping the collar and walking down the street and going to a photo shoot. So she's kind of playing with identity, playing with style in a very her way. My concern is that if you don't know the backstory and if you don't speak Russian, you'll just be like, 
is this a joke? What is this mess? So again, you need to get the PR narrative out there and they are doing a good job about it, good job with it. Because once you know the backstory, you're like, oh yes, I'm with Manisha all the way. So I do hope the commentators, before they introduce her, mention what the song is about. That she's, you know, playing with identity and she's saying women should stand up and be counted. Because then it's very cool. The public will eat this up, I have no doubt. This is sufficiently eccentric that it's gonna catch people's attention, but it's also got enough music to carry them through. Cause there is, is there like a rap break? I, I don't know, I feel like there's a spoken word, like rappy section, but then it's a little poppy, then it's a little hip hoppy, then it, it's everything. It's got Russian folk going on. So there's something to appeal to everyone, but ultimately she's the glue that holds it together. She really does make it work. There, no, I was gonna say there are not many. I would say most artists could not pull this off. They, they couldn't. You, you have to be Manisha. She is the one man. She is the man, Manisha. In any case, will this qualify? Now, if we go back to the running order again, you need to remember that she comes after Slovenia's Anna Soklic, which has a more sober, traditional, um, hallelujah, amen, glory be to the light performance. Um, I think Manisha's gonna wake people up. All right, Manisha's gonna just wake people up. She's gonna pop out of this running order. Sweden after her is good, but perhaps a bit safe. So I do think that Manisha stands a very good chance of qualifying. Only Yulia Samoylova has not qualified. Um, I think that this harks back to the babushki as Porig mentioned and that it's like, whoa, what's happening? what's happening and i do think the public will get behind that um so despite despite my concerns with the jury vote i do think this will do very well with the public vote vote and go through sinan uh mm -hmm. well it will be interesting to see this qualifying but i think it will be it will qualify uh, because it's different, you know, and people love uh, different stuff. And it's also uh, very um, likable, but it's also risky because we have, you know, Sweden. Um, after that, you know, people, you know, heard this kind of song already. And maybe they will say, mm, what kind of song is that? Is, is it a, you know, pop song? Is it a pop folk song? Uh, no, ethnic song or something like that for Russia? But yeah, she will qualify. Uh, maybe about the staging. I don't think she should change the staging if she's going, if she wants to, if or if her team uh, wants to change the staging because I think it's very nice her being in the center, in you know, uh, showing um, herself to everybody. Like, look, I'm a strong woman. You have to be strong woman as well. I can do, you know, I can go to Eurovision. I represent Russia. You can do it as well. Something like that, you know, if you want to, you know, if it's if if you have goals in life and yeah, but I think in Rotterdam, of course, the staging will be more massive because, you know, it's bigger than the national final. And I think people will. Yeah, people will like this. I, as you said, the public will eat this up. Yes. I'm so sorry. I cocked up the order. British woman, Lucy. <laughs> It's, it's all right, I forgive. No. <laughs> um, I I think it will qualify. I don't think it will become particularly high in kind of the order, kind of the rankings uh, out of the 10 that do. But I do think this is going to qualify. Like you said, the televote the is going to eat this up. Yeah. Because A, it's got like, it's one of the very few ethnic sounding songs this year. Like there isn't much this year that kind of, you could make an educated guess which country it's come from. Um, and so people, Eurofans love that rightfully. And so I think the tele Eurofan televote's gonna be good. The local or not Eurofan vote as well. I think, you know, she has got coverage. I mean, she was on BBC News the other day. I don't know if she's going to other uh, broadcasters around Europe, but there was quite a big story about it on BBC News, and it went really big on Twitter. I know in the UK, it's a conversation. People who aren't fans have messaged me about it, like, oh, have you seen this? I'm like, how have I seen this? Uh, but, you know, she's, she's getting the message out there, and it's becoming a big story, and I think... I mean, that's inevitably going to be what the commentators are talking about as well. I think the commentators will tell the story beforehand. And I think you can tell when she's like, mm, during the performance, you know, the way she is. I think you can get it across. And people are going to love it. 
Um, with the juries, I have no idea how that's going to go. It's uh, it's either going to be near the top or near the bottom. It, I don't think there's going to be an in-between with the juries. It could go very much either way. I have no idea, but I hope they don't tank it. I would love to see her in the final. Um, yeah, I reckon about eight in the final, depending on what the jury do. I think this is a very important song to have at Eurovision, especially from a country like Russia, and it gives a voice to the people that we don't often hear, and it's like just a fluke that it got there that Russia's original plan fell through seemingly, and they had to scramble and get this together, and this was the best they could come up with, and it's actually been a very pleasant surprise. Like Lucy said, I would be very disappointed if the jury's tanked this, you don't know what they do with these kind of songs. Sometimes they go for the little quirky ones, like um, Georgia, I think, in 2016, got jury support, got 12 points from the UK jury, and sometimes the juries just do random things like that. <laughs> if you're looking at the other ethnic songs in the semi-final, the only one that is somewhat et- ethnic is Go Away from Ukraine. And I think that this is far, far more voter-friendly than, than Shum. That Shum for a lot of people is going to be like a lot of noise and like a big like bang, what the hell was that? Whereas Manisha I see you. I see you. (laughs) Sorry. Whereas Manisha is a bit more mainstream. I think she she can get more votes when you compare and contrast. I think it's a pity that Samantha Tina's not in this semi final too, because that would make people realise how good Manisha is. Because she's kind of doing the same thing as Samantha Tina, but far, 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 far better. Oh, that's an interesting analysis. Um, this semifinal is tough. When I look at this running order, there are a lot of potential qualifiers here, and it's making this whole Wee Wee Jury video process a little stressful for me, because <laughs> I just don't know what's going to happen. I could see a universe where both Russia and Ukraine qualify. I could see a universe where neither qualify. It's just there is so much going on in this semifinal. Um, yeah, one, one point for me. I think that the backstory is actually quite interesting because so much of the attention has actually been born of the negativity thrown at her. People have said horrific things. They say, oh, you were born in Tajikistan. You're not Russian. Oh, what is this song? Oh, shut up. All these ugly, ugly words, you know, from frankly, people who are just living in the dark ages. It, it, it's been born of an ugly place, but it's become beautiful. And actually, it's just another example of how when people try to hate on you, they can actually end up making you. So you go, girl. You go, Manisha. You turn all that nastiness into fuel to slay. Okay. Now, we need to go around and give our scores out of a 10, along with a justification I should point out that our scores were locked by our accounting firm several weeks ago, so I'm not sure if that was before or after all the media buzz, but we were not allowed to change our scores at risk of violating our contract with our accounting firm, aka the House of Robin. All right, so Lucy, British woman, what is your score? Um, British woman has given this a big fat eight. Um, I respect everything about this song. I love it so much. It's just outside my top 10 for this year, like just, but I'm obsessed with Manisha. Like she's incredible. I think she deserves a really great result because I think it would be a really healthy thing for her to get a good result as well. Like for people maybe to take notice of the message, anything like that. And I mean, I mean, she pretty much gets a point alone for that bit where she just shouts like, don't be afraid because God, what she's doing must be terrifying at times. Like... The way people are talking to her, like you say, all those ugly words, that must be scary. But she's not afraid. She's good. She's shouting it for all to hear. She doesn't care what you say. And I think that alone is just worthy of something. I don't know. It's an eight. King of Slayage, deputy editor, knower of all things, Porig. I think this is, like I said, it's a very important song for... Eurovision, it's got a very important message and it's an actual genuine and authentic message and Manisha delivers it with such passion and she has such belief in what she's selling that I'm giving this song, even though it's not something I would normally listen to, a 7 point. We move to Germany to graphic designer extraordinaire (laughs) Bonsoir Perry singer Sinan. Hello, um, I gave her seven, seven points out of ten. 
because I love her. I like the song very much, and I love the instrumentals as well. You know, the those ethnic sounds, Russian ethnic sounds, and also the Russian language. You know, we love when a country sings in their native language. Um, I just love it, and it's different. I like different things. Being different is a talent, and she's very, very talented. You calling her very, very different? I'm trying to read all this. In any case, my score is a seven point five. I like that she's taking a risk. You know, I've loved Russia's entries of recent years, but some people I've read on comment sections call them safe. You know, Tomachevi's sister is very sweet. Sergei Lazarev, a very you know, a pop song. Um, Paulina Gagarina, you know, a beautiful ballad. But people called them safe. However. They were polished. You can be safe and polished. Anyways, this is not safe, but it is polished. You know, and it's also a little rough. The best diamonds are the ones you cut yourself. And Alba Girl has found the ore, and she's at home scrubbing it. I don't know what that analogy means, but I know she's got a diamond on tea. Now, we of course are not the only movie bloggers. There are dozens of us all over this earth from Australia to Kaliningrad to um, um, Czech Republic to the UK to the US of A. And when you take an average across all these people, the overall global score is 7.18. That is actually of the six videos we've published, the highest score thus far. So she's on to a good thing here. Anything above a seven is tough to get. Wow, totally deserved. I mean, totally deserved. And it seems that people like um, her and the song. And yeah, congrats. Yeah, I'm super excited about that. It's so nice to see her doing well, kind of across a mass opinion as well. Um, I think she's doing okay on the school board app and everything. Like people are liking this. I'm really, really pleased. Kind of fingers crossed that translates on stage of Moscow. <laughs> well, that's what we think. What do you think? Are you living for the Russian woman Manisha? Do you think she will make the final? Do you think this could climb the scoreboard in the final, or is it too much of a risk that's going to nosedive? Let us know here on Weebly Wee Blogs. Don't forget to give us give us all of your opinions and also about this song. Do you like it? Do you think it's a nice song? down below and like us subscribe to our channel because we slay for you Sanan <laughs> <laughs> has basically covered everything but he you also should turn on your notification bell so very important and keep tuned because we have plenty more wee wee jury videos to come and we will see you later Bye. Bye. Bye.